Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And today we're going to be learning about the church and how the church is the body of Christ and what that means for us. Uh, But first off, what it means is that the church is called to love and serve one another. And you guys do that well, right? You love, love, love. And and I just want to encourage you, as Paul encourages the Thessalonians, he says, you're doing well, but do it more and more. And so if I could just come with a word today for you guys, it would say, this is an awesome church. Just be more awesome as the Spirit fills this place. And, And so as we're going to be getting into this today. The Bible teaches us something about spiritual gifts, and it it really starts out with understanding that every single Christian has been given at least one spiritual gift. There is not a single believer in Christ who lacks a spiritual gift at any time, so you're going to have at least one. Now, the issue comes when Christians don't know their spiritual gifts, or for whatever reason, they're not using their spiritual gifts in the church. And that was what Paul was seeking to resolve when he wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And before we get to 1 Corinthians 12, which we're going to be looking at verse 12 this morning, let me tell you what Paul has already said about spiritual gifts in this chapter. Uh, First, Paul says he doesn't want us to be ignorant or uninformed about spiritual gifts. And so spiritual gifts, just at the very start, they come from the Holy Spirit who is God. And when the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us as believers, it says that Jesus gives us a variety of gifts, a variety of services, and a variety of activities, but it's the same Lord and the same God and the same Spirit who empowers them all in all. So simply put, you have a gift And that gift is given to you from God. And that gift is to be used in the church for the benefit of others. That means that spiritual gifts really, though, has more to do with God and more to do with others than it has to do with you. Now, there's a few final things that I want to share about spiritual gifts before we go on. And one is that each of the gifts that we see in the scriptures, they're they're different. They They vary in kinds because we're all different people. But all the gifts come from the same source. They all come from the same God. And so this means that God gives to the church a diversity of gifts because God loves a diverse church. And yet God calls us to bring our gifts together because God loves a united church. And so we're going to be talking today about diversity and unity in the body of Christ. And and that's what the Apostle Paul is now going to help us to understand as he puts this all together in this amazing chapter of 1 Corinthians 12. He's going to be using this analogy of the body to show how we need to bring our gifts together. And, And perhaps you've heard that term before, the body of Christ, and you didn't know where it came from. Well, this is where it comes from. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 12. Let me read it. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you thanking you that you are the chief shepherd and overseer of our souls. We thank you, Jesus, that you have sent your spirit already to fill this place. And every believer in Christ who is filled with your spirit has come here with a gift. And I pray that those gifts would be used for the edification of the body of Christ. And Lord, teach us more and more what this means and how we can live this out as your church. Lord, we thank you for this time. I thank you for this church and what it means to me. Lord, fill this place, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... This analogy shouldn't be too hard for us to comprehend because we all have bodies. You know, I I have a body. Uh, From the top of my head, from the sole of my feet, this is my six foot four body right here. Hello, right? And my body has many different parts. Just starting here with my head, I have a mouth, and I have nose, and I have ears, and I have eyes. And, And then as you get down through the body, you get to the end of the body, and I have feet, and on my feet, I have five little piggies, right? One of them went to the market, one stayed home, one had roast beef, 
One had none, and one went wee, wee, wee all the way home, right? (laughs) But in all seriousness, this analogy shouldn't be really that hard for us to understand because even children are meant to comprehend it. it. It's something that as we come to this text, we need to come to it like little children. You know, Jesus did say to us, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, become like a little child. And so this is a very simple message for you today. Our body is one whole, and yet the body is also composed of many parts, and so it is with Christ. You guys know this. Jesus is the head of the church, and we are his body. We are the body parts of Christ, and when we come together, we are working to fulfill the will of Jesus who is the head. And so let's continue with this analogy going on into verse 13. For by one spirit, you were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. So right here, the Apostle Paul is emphasizing the unity that is to exist in the church. If Jesus is the head of the body, and we've been put into Christ's body by the Spirit, then we need to understand that the Spirit wants to create unity. Now, the Spirit here is likened to water. Paul uses two water analogies here. He says that we were all baptized and we were all made to drink. Those those are just two ways of referring to the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and I will give you living water. And this is what he said about the Holy Spirit. And so when we come to Jesus by faith, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our bodies. The Spirit comes into your body and then you are baptized into Christ's body. But the word that should stand out to us in verse 13, it's not spirit, it's not body, it's not baptism, it's not drink. What's the word that should stand out to us in verse 13? I believe it's the word one. Do you see how it's mentioned three times there in verse 13? You could even circle it three times. One, one, one. It's being used repeatedly because Paul's talking about unity and the Corinthians needed to recall this, that the Holy Spirit wants unity in the church. You know that, right, church? Do you realize Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, how tried how tested, and how true this church is. This church has been around a long time and has done great work for the kingdom of heaven. And many churches have come out of you. Many churches have come out of you. And and I get to now pastor a church that has come out of you. And I know in my spirit that I will always be a part of you. There's a unity of the spirit that God wants us to be eager to maintain. That's why I'm here right now. It's because there's a bond of peace that only the Holy Spirit can create that we're called to keep. And, And you know, distance and time might separate us. It's been a little bit of time since I've been back here, but I'm thankful for this church because this church has become a model to us in Palos Verdes. You know, God has done a great work where we're at in Palos Verdes. Four years ago, four people left this church. Me, my wife, my daughter Kennedy, and my son Caleb, and we knew not a single soul on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Four years later, the church has grown to over 700 people. Yeah. And, and we have a dear couple of our church right up here, Kim and Gil, who came, who came our first Easter Sunday, and they consider this church their second home. So when they come here, there's this bond, there's this peace that we feel when we come and visit you. And I just want to tell you, if you ever want to come down and visit Calvary Chapel Palos Verdes, you're more than welcome. And I think that when you come, you're going to have a little bit of a sense of, 
This feels right. This feels a lot like what I've experienced here. Now, verse 14 says this, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Now, what was happening in Corinth still happens in the church today every time we gather. There were people coming from all different backgrounds. In Corinth, there were Jews, there were Gentiles, there were slave people, there were free people. There was a whole host of people with all different stories, all different testimonies, and yet they were coming to Jesus to be made one as the body of Christ. And so a body is a fantastic way to think about the church. There is both oneness and there is diversity because the body is one whole and yet the body also has many parts. For example, you have hands, but you also have feet. Both belong to the body and yet in different ways. Verse 15 says that if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Now, because the body is one whole with many different parts, all the parts need to understand their connection to the whole. For instance, a foot does what a foot does. Feet walk. And a hand does what a hand does. You know, hands pick things up. We usually don't walk on our hands, and we usually don't pick things up with our feet. If you do, you're a very gifted person. Right? <laughs> And, and the foot shouldn't say to the hand, I can't pick things up, so I don't belong to the body. Well, you need to listen, foot. You have a different role because the foot is meant for walking. Just because you don't have the same function as, say, a hand doesn't mean that you're any less important or any less needed in the body. I like this analogy. You want to keep going? Verse 16, if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? You know, the body needs eyes to see and the body needs ears to hear. If the ear says, I, I can't see, so I don't belong. Or if the eye says, I can't hear, so I don't belong. That would not make the eyes or the ears unnecessary, would it? The eyes are needed to see and the ears are needed to hear. Both are needed to fulfill their function in the body. We need eyes and we need ears. Is this making sense? All right, let's keep going. Verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? This is sort of a funny thing to imagine. How strange would it be if your body was just one big rolling eyeball? What, what would be, I think, a little bit more creepy is what if your whole body was just like one big ear? Just that would just look weird. And some people have really weird ears, you know? And, and we have eyes and we have ears, and yet they're connected to the body. They, they're not meant to be alone. They both need to then be in their proper place as well. How strange would it be if you walked up to somebody and they had an ear on their forehead, are you getting this analogy? Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, right? Now, again, this, this analogy from Paul is so simple that even a child can understand it. And so I want you to stay focused on the word of God with me today. And, and do you have spiritual ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, church? This meant this message is meant to be so simple, and maybe you're like, okay, it's almost too simple. Like, maybe give me a little bit of deeper teaching, please. Well, let me tell you, as simple as this teaching is, for some reason, as a church, we have a really hard time living this one out. If we want to experience depths in the church, we must understand this very simple tr truth right here. We are a body, and you belong to this body. Now verse 18 says, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Now this reminds us that God is our creator. God is our designer. He's our sustainer. He's the one who works all things together, and that includes both your human body and the church body. God made both of them. 
and he chooses how the body is to be arranged. That in and of itself is a testimony that there is a God. I mean, think about how fearfully and wonderfully made we are. How God has so perfectly composed the body. Now, if God put a leg on the side of your head, you might say God is a bad designer. (laughs) But God put ears where ears go. He put legs where legs go. And we only know where ears and legs go because God made us to know his will. He arranged and set the members of the body, each one of them, just as he pleased. And so the point that Paul is making here is that God is perfect in his choosing. God chooses everything according to his will. And we can't always see that, can we? As time goes on and, you know, the longer that you walk with Jesus, it's it's amazing to look back. Just coming here this weekend and thinking back just over the last four years, thinking back to the time when I was 17 years old. You know, I, I was with Debbie Schneider in the high school room where I used to do ministry in that room for seven years. And, and I told her as I was staring that there watching my kids play on the half pipe, I said, you know, I came into this room for the half pipe and for the girls and I stayed for Jesus. <laughs> and... and to look back, you know, hindsight is always 2020 vision. You know, when we moved out to plant Calvary Chapel Palos Verdes in the middle of a global pandemic, the future was a little bit scary. But now as we look back, God is so faithful. He's so good. And God always has a perfect track record. And then verse 18 and 19, it says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? We should be tracking with this right now, right? The the body has many members, but it's still one body. We don't want to see rolling eyeballs or walking ears. Which means this, is that, listen, you cannot be a lone ranger as a Christian. You need other members of the body. I I think it's quite silly when someone says, I'm a Christian, I just don't do church. Or or even when people in the church say, I I go to church, I'm just not into the whole like community thing and the whole belonging thing. I just kind of come and go. That's about as strange as a cutoff year. If you've been And let me just say this, if you've been, for whatever reason, disconnected from the body of Christ, perhaps you've been hurt, perhaps you've been burnt out, perhaps you had some kind of failure, Uh, you know, perhaps you're new to faith and you're really not sure how this whole thing works yet, or perhaps you're old in faith and for some reason you've come to this sense that you think you can retire from service in the body of Christ. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps all the different reasons for why we might not actively be engaged in the life of the body. I just want to say to you, church, if that's you, if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you this morning, you need to get reconnected. I happen to know a guy who can heal and reconnect cut off ears. Now, verse 20 says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Now, Paul's being a little bit redundant in this point now. And you might be thinking that I am too. Because we really got to get this point. Again, it's very simple. We are each one part of a greater whole. But if we don't live in the simplicity of that, we're going to miss the depths of what the church is meant to be. The body is one whole, and yet it has many members. Verse 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. If the eye didn't have the hand, the body would be lacking. If the head did not have the feet, wouldn't the body be lacking? When we say this, when we say, I don't really need the help or the support of other believers, you're lacking. And the point is, is that we all need each other. And if we don't have each other, we're lacking. 
And so let's, let's start applying this a little bit for how, how this takes place in the church. If the gifted encourager doesn't have the gifted administrator, we'll all miss out. If the generous giver does not have the hospitable server, we're gonna miss out. If the teacher doesn't have the evangelist or if the evangelist doesn't have the teacher, guess what? We'll miss out. And the application is endless for, for us in this because you have spiritual gifts in this church and you're needed here. What part of the body are you? Do you know that you are part of this church body? Today might be the first time that this fact is breaking through to you that you are needed here. You are wanted here. You belong here. You need this church and this church needs you. I'll never forget what Pastor David Guzik said one time, he says, the church is not a sermon appreciation society, right? No, we're a body. Now, verse 22 to 25 says, no, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacked it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. So Paul takes this analogy just a little bit further, and he says that on your body you have parts that are weaker, You have parts that are hidden, and those parts we often will cover up with clothing for modesty's sake. You know, there's there's a reason why my shirt is buttoned up here this morning. Even though Scott Dupar probably wanted to come up to me and start unbuttoning my top button, he would always do that for some reason on Sunday mornings. I was going to do it to him during prayer this morning, just come over and just start unbuttoning his top buttons, right? No, there's certain parts of the body, right, that, that, that we cover up. Even just the, the body itself, there's parts of our flesh that cover up very important internal organs that are within our body. So uh, let's take this analogy and think about, for instance, like our pinky toe. You think you could probably live without your pinky toe? Yeah. What about your liver? Do you think you could live without your liver? No. The eyes and the ears and the hands and the feet, these are the parts that we have on our body that we see all the time. You know, I'm maybe talking with my hands and I can move along with my feet and I can track you with my eyes. These are the presentable parts of our bodies. But don't forget about the pinky toe. Don't forget about the liver. Don't forget about the fact that if my heart stopped beating right now, I would be done. And so we need to think about every single part of the body. And Paul says clearly, the way that we avoid schisms in the church, the way we avoid divisions in the church is by showing honor to every person in the body. The Bible actually challenges Christians to an honor competition. The Bible says honor everyone. And last time I checked in the Greek, the word everyone means everyone. And it says, outdo one another in showing honor. And so there's people in the church that we cannot live without. We have to honor everyone, and we have to honor every gift that is brought to the table. For example, in this church, there are people who will be more visible because their gifts are designed that way. Pastor Tommy, as a teacher and preacher of this church. Adam, as a worship leader of this church the various Bible study leaders, the greeters, the welcome team, the children's ministry workers, the the youth leaders, but then there's people in the church who are less visible. The prayer warriors, the generous givers, the creators, the administrators, the sound technicians. I can't tell you for how many decades Rich Williams has sat back there in that booth mixing the sound for this church. (laughs) 
And they're all very much needed to the body. Do you understand what Paul is saying? He's saying we all have different roles and some roles are more visible, some roles are less visible. Just because the more visible roles are seen doesn't mean they're greater than the less visible gifts. They're just different. And the less visible gifts are not greater than the more visible gifts. They're just different. So some roles and some gifts have more visibility. Some roles and some gifts have less visibility. The visibility of a gift does not make it any more or less important to the body. Jesus wants every member of the body playing its part. Verse 26, if that's the case, then how is this going to work itself out in the body? Here we go. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, I've spoken to you already about the pinky toe. I happen to believe that you could get along just fine without your pinky toe until I broke my pinky toe last week. I was coming around the corner in my kitchen a little too tight, a little too fast, and bam, I just took my pinky toe out. And, and, you know, I I jumped around a few times, and then my legs dropped, my hands reached out to grab my foot, my stomach began to feel nauseous, my head began to ache, my eyes began to tear, my mouth began to wail, and every single part of my body from the top of my head to the tiniest part of my foot, that little pinky toe, I was focused on that suffering. (laughs) All for what? A little pinky toe. That little wee, 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 all the way home little pinky toe. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. I've been feeling this analogy all week as I've been limping on my foot. My whole body has been compensating for that little member that is healing right now. And and so the converse is also true. If a member of the body is honored, all rejoice together. Ladies, you know this. When you go get a pedicure, doesn't the whole body rejoice? (laughs) Right? When I preached this message at our church a little while ago, my wife's like, you owe me now, now I gotta go get a pedicure. (laughs) So she went and got a pedicure, and guess what? I broke my pinky toe. (laughs) I broke my pinky toe after preaching this message. Now, If the body parts only served their own purposes, the body would be a mess. Think about cancer. When cancer cells enter the body, cancer serves its own purpose. There are spiritual cancers that can enter the body of Christ and the sure sign of cancer in the church is when there are people who only want to please themselves. When there's division, When when there's schisms, when no one's thinking the best of one another, but everyone's thinking the worst. The body's in pain. The body is is killing itself. Instead, we're called to rejoice with those who rejoice, and we do that by showing honor. And we're called to mourn with those who mourn, and we do that by showing honor. And that's how the body stays healthy and happy and strong, is we outdo one another in showing honor. Do you see the church in this way? Well, you should. And if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be ignorant about this teaching that if you are here right now, you belong here. And you have something to give here. So get active, discover your gift, use it here in this church. You need this church, and guess what? This church needs you. Verse 27 says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Zach Schellerberger once said that God saves us individually, but he does not save us to individuality. The body of Christ is a family. It's a community. You belong here. You're wanted here. You're needed here. And I hope that after this teaching today, you would really believe that. Amen? Let me pray for us and I'll invite the worship team to come on up. God, thank you so much for this morning. I ask that you would allow for each member of this body to rejoice that they are part of something. 
and that more and more, Lord, this body would come together and serve your purposes. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and what you're doing here at Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara. Lord, I rejoice over the fact that this church just continues to do great things in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, fill this place with your spirit, we ask in your name, amen. Amen. Well, let's all stand up together, and I want to give you just one final challenge as you're thinking perhaps about how the Holy Spirit might want to apply this in your life. You know, when you come to church, what are you primarily thinking about? Let everyone settle for a minute. When when you come to church, what are you primarily thinking about? Are you primarily thinking about what you're going to get? Are you going to get a nice hot cup of coffee and a great burger, which I'm really excited to get today. I I haven't tried one of these burgers at the cafe over here. Uh, Are you making sure you're going to get your seat? Are you going to make sure that you get the song that you want to be played? Are you going to make sure that you want to get the message that's going to speak to you? And, and if, if none of those things happen, are you leaving quite disappointed because you didn't get what you were going to get and so you're going to throw a fit? Or do you primarily come to church thinking this, what am I going to give? Let me encourage you in this, is if you shift that mindset, if you begin to come to church and every time you come here, you begin to think, What am I going to give that is going to turn your world upside down and this is going to set this church on a whole other trajectory? There's something unique about Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara. This is a very healthy church body. It has been for many years. But more and more, I want to tell you, church, you should get involved here. If this church did not afford me the opportunity to grow in my gifts and to be used here and to serve here and to give something to offer here, I would not be where I am today. Listen, you should go talk to Brett or to Kevin or to Polly or to Josh or Will or Brandon or Scott or Sammy or Heather or Adam or Ralph or Terry, any of these people, you should go talk to them today and say, you know what? I have spiritual gifts that I want to offer this church. And and I have been, for whatever reason, disconnected from using them here in this body. And I want to begin to use them. Plug me in. Get me connected. And I guarantee if you begin to come to church more and more thinking, what can I give? There's no stopping what God's going to do in and through you and in and through this church. Amen? Amen. Amen.